Hello everyone, let's look at this equation with fractions here. This time we are having uh, an equation with um, a two times x minus three. So that looks like there are two turns in there, but then that's inside the parentheses, but then it's actually just one turn and then it's over the five. And we are having like the same structure as this in the second turn right here. So how do we deal with this kind of equations? The first thing is that we are going to just rewrite this so that it will it will look different, but it will still be the same equation. So we are not doing any calculation yet. We are just rewriting to change its look so that it looks less confusing in this case. So the, fir um, the first step is that we can just write two and the five. We can just put that fraction in the front of the X minus three because the X minus three is in the numerator. So we can rewrite the equation as two over five times X minus three and then minus. Now you see that we have the two and the five in the front, right? So we can actually do the same thing for the second turn right here. We can put the three and the four in the front. So we are going to get minus three over four and then times X plus two and all that is equal to three. So that's the, um, the new looking equation, which is the same equation as the original problem. So now we can see that there was a denominator of a five here. There was a denominator with a four here. And then there was, well, there was the denominator for this three is actually a one, right? So we are going to multiply every turn by the LCD so that we can get rid of the fractions. So let's do that. So the LCD, so let's just write the LCD on the side. The LCD would be based on the five and the four. Um, for the three because it its denominator is a one so we don't need to worry about it so the lcd would be a number that we can turn both five and four into which is the number 20. so we can turn five into uh, 20 we can turn four into 20 by multiplying those numbers by some numbers so that we can turn them into 20. okay so now let's just multiply everything by 20. So we are going to just copy down the equation. Then X minus three. And again, this time when we are multiplying by 20, we can turn the 20 into a fraction by putting one under it, right? So we are going to get 20 over one. And then next is that we have minus three over four times X plus two. And then again, we are going to multiply by 20 over one. And then on the right hand side of the equation, even though it doesn't really, there is no fraction on the right hand side of the equation, but we still need to multiply by the LCD. Yeah, so let me say it one more time. Even when there is no fraction on the right hand side of the equation, we also need to multiply this term, this three by the 20, right? So we are going to get three, times the 20. And then in this case, we don't really need to put 20 over one because we we are just multiplying two whole numbers. Okay, so let's do the canceling right here. And when we do the canceling, we cancel the 20 with the denominator. So the five becomes a one because we're dividing top and bottom by five. So the 20 divided by five would be a four. Now, second turn here, the four and the 20, we can cancel them by dividing the four by four. So the four becomes a one. And then the 20 divided by four, it becomes a five. Okay, now you may say, what about the stuff that's inside the parentheses? We are not going to touch them. So just leave them for now. Okay, so the next step is to just clean up the expression. You see that we have a two on the outside of the parentheses. The, there was also a four here. So when we multiply the two and the four together, we are going to get the eight. And then now what about the stuff that's inside the parentheses? We are just going to just copy them. So X minus three and then that. And then we have minus, right? Now we multiply the numbers that are on the outside of the parentheses together three and the five, right? We are going to get 15. And then just this group right here, X plus two. 
so that we are going to get what three times 20 on the right hand side which is 60. so now you get an equation that's actually simpler and then what's next next step is to remove all the parentheses right so let's do that so next step let's remove all the parentheses we can do it by distributing the a to the x and the, the a to the negative three right so let's do that here so we are going to get eight and then x and then eight times negative three we are going to get negative 24. And then the second turn here, negative 15 times x, we are going to distribute this negative 15 with the x at, with, to the x and to the 2. So we are going to get negative 15 times x and negative 15 times uh, positive 2. So negative 15 times x is going to be negative 15 x. I think the purple color is a little bit too hard to see right so let me just use a um, easier to see purple color okay now next one is going to be what negative 15 times 2 we are going to get negative 2 i mean negative 30 right negative 15 times 2 is not negative 2 it's negative 30 okay so that's good and then what do we have the right hand side is just the 60 so there is nothing on this side right so 60 right here so the next step is to combine like terms that we have on the left hand side of the equation. For the right hand side, we are just going to leave the 60 because that's there are no other terms that we need to do, right? So let's just combine those two terms. Uh, 8x minus 15x, we are going to get what? Negative 7x. And then negative 24 minus 30, we are going to get negative um, 54. Then we have the 60 here. And actually, we are almost done with this equation because there are only three turns left and we need to isolate the x turn. Yeah, so what we wanna do is that we wanna keep this negative seven x on the left side of the equation. So all the turns without the x, in this case, will just be the negative 54. We want to move it to the right hand side of the equation. So to do that, then we are going to add 54. Uh, why are we adding 54? It's really because we have negative 54 in the problem. So to cancel this negative 54, we need to have a positive 54 so that we have one positive, one negative so that we can cancel them. So now let's just cross them out. Okay. So now those turns, they cancel each other out and then we have zero, right? So we are left with just the negative seven X on the left hand side of the equation. Let's write down negative seven X equals. Now, what do we get here? 60 plus 54, we are going to get, what is that? That's 114, 114. And then you may say, what do we do next? The next step is to get rid of the number in front of the X. We actually want to turn this number into a one. To do that, then we are going to divide by this, whatever number that's in front of the X. And so we need to do division, right? So let's draw the fraction line, draw the fraction line. And then we are dividing by negative seven. So we are dividing by the exact same number and do not include the X in your division, right? We are just dividing by negative seven, not negative seven X. So cancel those two numbers. Actually, let me cancel them this way. So the negative seven cancel becomes a one, negative seven cancel becomes a one. See that that's not the same canceling as what we have right here. That becomes zero, one plus, uh, one, plus one minus. Here we are dividing. So it's not the same operation. And then what about this answer here? It doesn't seem like we can simplify it, right? So just leave it. And then our final answer, okay, would just be x equals, what is that? That's going to be negative 114 divided by seven. 
Okay, so that's the final answer. Then you may say, do we need to do anything to this or use your calculator to turn into a decimal? That's unnecessary, but you can also do that. Okay, so that's problem is finished. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time.